Hey there. I wanted to post a quick video discussing what is called in the Holy Week Maundy Thursday. That's not a uh, that's that's not a, a day of the Holy Week that we typically observe. Uh, might not know much about it. Let me tell you a funny story uh, that will explain what Maundy Thursday is. So years ago, at my first pastorate, I was maybe 22, 21. I was really, really young. And I was pastoring in this small little town in Illinois. And uh, it was a rough town, lots of poverty. And all the pastors in the town were friends. I was by far ridiculously much younger than everyone else. Uh, and all of the pastors had widely varying theology, and most of it was total <laughs> in pretty strong disagreement with mine. We had, uh, we had a lady minister named Meredith, and she was the pastor of the Methodist Church, and she liked to ride horses. And then we had a pastor of the Liberal Baptist Church in town named Gerald, and there were all these other people that I, that I talked to and worked with pretty regularly. We, we, would, uh, we would dispense all of, we would pool all of our benevolence funds because there was such a need in this town. We would just pool all those benevolence funds and then kind of take turns administrating those to people in need. Anyway, long story short, uh, these guys were all way left of me theologically, uh, but they were super nice to me and I, I really appreciated them. And uh, we met and to discuss, in my first year, we met to discuss uh, Holy Week and whether we could do anything together as, as, a, as a group of churches. Um, the, honestly, I was pretty concerned about what we could do together, given our strong disagreements theologically. But I wanted to do what I could to cooperate and, uh, and support these guys and in whatever way that I could. So uh, they, most of these people were older and just had a completely different sensibility than I did. And um, one of them said, well, let's, let's do a Maundy Thursday service together. And, you know, I'm, I'm this Baptist kid, and I literally have no idea what a Maundy Thursday service is. And so I think they could tell on my face that I didn't know what that was. And, and so very, you know, very kindly they said, uh, Maundy Thursday comes from the Latin mandatum, and it's when Jesus in the book of John commands the disciples to wash uh, one, not one another's feet, to be, to be servants to one another. And, um, <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Oh, that Maundy Thursday, you know. Anyway, so uh, they're like, let's do something together. Let's have a community service for that. And I was like, okay, I, you know, maybe. So, uh, so one of the guys, the UCC pastor in town, he's like, I'll plan it, and then I'll give you guys kind of parts. And I was like, at this point, I'm in so deep, I don't know what else to do. So I'm just agreeing. And uh, so like, like maybe Wednesday evening, something like that he gets all of the uh the parts of this service out to all of us and he has decided that he wants to do a pantomime recreation of john chapter 13 um with all the pastors playing parts and he <laughs> and he he chose me to be peter um so in the story which I'll read here in a minute, Peter does not want his feet washed. And so he, uh, he, he's, he does not want Jesus to wash his feet. He thinks that that's way beneath Jesus. And so I had to, I had to pantomime Peter saying no to, to Jesus. I, 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 before I knew what happened, I was pushed into a, a, a play, you know. And so my role was to play Peter and, and tell Jesus no. But I couldn't tell Jesus no. Now, I don't really know what pantomime is or how to do it. And uh, certainly all was it was all so confusing to me. And so I asked the guys, like, well, what do you want me to do specifically? He's like, well, Jesus is going to come to wash your feet. And you need to say no in some sort of way that everyone knows, you know, that you don't want your feet washed. And then Jesus is going to say, uh, unless I wash... Um, Unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me. And then you have to signal that, um, you know, not only are you now okay with him washing your feet, but that you want all of you washed. So I remember my actions to this day because I was so embarrassed on this stage in front of the town uh, acting, out this, acting out this ridiculous scene. I remember my part totally. Like, okay, so here I am, Peter. Jesus comes to wash my feet, and I went... 
And then Jesus says, uh, you know, someone reads the scripture where Jesus says, uh, unless I wash your feet, you have no part of me. And then I went. So that was my role. So Maundy Thursday is an observance of the mandate Jesus provides, the mandate Jesus gives in John 13. Let me read that passage to you. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that, this hour, that his hour had come to depart out of the world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing you do not understand, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And that was why he said, not all of you are clean. And when he'd washed uh, he'd washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place. He said, do you understand what I have done to you? Okay, so this is essentially, Maundy Thursday is essentially a reminder that we exist to serve others. And in this particular season of uncertainty, uh, uh, this particular season where fear is certainly a major part of everybody's uh, experience or recipe, this idea that in the midst of our potential suffering, we pause and we serve is to the, at the core of the gospel and at the core of what it means to be in Christ. Uh, verse 3 is really the key in John 13 where it says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and he was going back to God, rose from supper and he laid aside his outer garments and he put on a servant's uh, towel and he began to uh, wash the disciples feet uh, this this means that jesus had confidence in who he was in where he was going and that that confidence that he was the lord's that he was that he was god that confidence allowed him to take on a posture of humiliation. It allowed him to take on a posture of embarrassment, of shame, of weakness. Uh, on Friday, we'll talk, and during our, our, web, our, our WebEx meeting, we'll talk about 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and the foolishness of God and the weakness of God in the cross. But what's happening here is, is that Jesus is, is putting on humility. He's putting on shame, honestly, in order to serve and demonstrate service to his disciples. So here's a couple thoughts I want to, have, I want to share with you practically. Uh, one of the things that, that I think is always important to remember is that if during this time of uh, quarantine and social distancing and the lockdown and so forth, you have a relatively ideal situation, you have a marriage that is more or less healthy, you have children who are more or less obedient, you have a home that is more or less confident, and many of you have jobs that are more or less secure. Let's remember that all of those things are God's good gift to you apart from anything you deserve, and that there are many who don't have those things, and that they're enduring this process with a completely different set of questions and a completely different set of appetites. It's our job as Christians to remember those people and to care for those people and to act really for the benefit of those people as much as for the benefit of ourselves. Uh, Jesus is saying essentially, listen, because you are mine as I am the Father's, 
you're capable and called to engage in behavior that, that, that is, that is self-effacing, that potentially costs you esteem in order to be a blessing to others. And, and that's what Jesus is doing here. And, and, and the, the thing that's, that's so pronounced about this passage is that, is, is, and I think this is why the, the term Ma Maundy Thursday sticks and works and is good, it's a command. It's, it's a mandate from Jesus. So I read up to verse uh, 12. Let me keep reading John 13. He says, You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If then I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So uh, uh, yesterday I was cleaning out my van, and many of you know my little weird camper van saga, and uh, it's still to be continued. Anyway, I'm cleaning it out, and I found um, a decent sized pack of toilet paper that I had bought at some point just to, to you know, have out on the road. And it was unopened, and you know it was the good stuff. Was, you know why not? Anyway, so I find this decent pack of little toilet. This, this, yeah, you know, it was like a twelve pack or something. And uh, I set it aside. I put it in the, um, I put it in the church somewhere. Oh, in the in the in the uh, kitchen for a while, thinking maybe somebody would grab it if they needed it. Anyway, I remembered that toilet paper, and I I went on my uh, neighborhood app, and I just posted, "Does anyone need TP? Um, I've got a small amount that I can share." Just email me if you do. Um, a couple hours later, I got an email from a woman in, in our neighborhood who told me that she had not left her house since, I, I wanna say, I wanna say like early, early March. It was, a, it was a surprising date. And she went on to say that the reason is that she's got one person in her house who is, uh, who is in mid chemo, so s severely immunocompromised, and another person in her, in her house that has lupus. And she said, you know, I don't actually, I'm actually running pretty light on toilet paper. Would you be willing to, to, to take this, bring this to my house? So of course, you know, like that's great. I get, to, I get to take the toilet paper to this girl's house. So I went down and got it from the kitchen at the church. And uh, then I, I, I thought, oh, you know what? If they're sick and they're not feeling that great, let me just kind of guess and and try to uh, anticipate another need that they might have so i opened up the freezer and somebody you one of you had made two ziploc bags of bone broth chicken bone broth soup and i thought well that's perfect you know that's that's per assuming they're not vegetarians uh that's i'm just gonna guess that it's okay and so i grabbed that and i i threw that in the bag and some one of you had brought some christian literature and i threw some of that in the bag i threw my card in the bag and I drove it over to her house and dropped it off. And then she said, you know, if you could maybe help me find a hose, like if you could go to Walmart or something for me, I want to be able to water my lawn, but my hose is broken. So that's, we're in the process of doing that right now. Anyway, all that to say, this is Maundy Thursday. This is the point in which we uh, are encouraged by Jesus to say, you know what? The Father has given us all things. We've come from God. We were born again through the Holy Spirit. We belong to God, and we are returning to God. Worst case scenario, best case scenario, it's all going to head back to God. And therefore, we get the privilege and the honor of serving people. And sometimes that service makes us look dumb. Sometimes that service makes us look weak. But not to everybody. God will always vindicate that kind of service and care.